to you and never let me go I lay it all down again to hear you say that I Help me find my way, bring me back to you.
know that you are near Lord we need you right now you are the comforter and you are all that we want and you are all that we will ever need sister Ambrista was loved in this church she was a part of the old Aces choir and they're here today singing with the praise team representing her because they did not want to be left out and I wouldn't have felt good leaving them out so the old aces and the new aces, all right? Amen. Amen. We're here to praise God for her life today. And the song simply says, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Come on, hear my humble cry. Hear my humble cry. Come on, today others are calling on him.
past the Ambrister family by. Pastor Eric Danny Clark, President of the North Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Pastor Andrew Burroughs, Executive Secretary of the North Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Pastor Ed Ambrister, Pastor of Jubilee West Church. Members of the Bree family, brothers and sisters, friends, good morning. We are gathered here in this service of Thanksgiving to celebrate the life of our late dear sister, Chilita Ambrister. Sister Ambrister was not someone who joined the Freeport Church family and just warmed the pew. She made her presence felt. She was a prayer warrior and someone who believed in the power of prayer. I remember when I led out in Midday Joy, it is a special prayer meeting for women of the North Bahamas Conference, which was conducted every Thursday, and we did it for a couple of years. Sister Ambrister was one of the ladies who was always present. I volunteered to pick her up, and if I was running late, she would call me just to make sure I did not forget her. One of the things she prayed for every time was that God and those of you who know her and heard her prayers can attest to this. She would say, Lord, I want you to beat on the heart of my loved ones that are not saved with the hammer of conviction that they would accept you as their Lord and Savior and save, serve you. She believed that this world was not her home and that she was only passing through. That is why she accepted the truth in God's word and made her calling an election sure. She believed that Jesus died for her and if she died being faithful to him when he comes to collect his children that he will take her home to heaven where she will live with him for eternity. Her desire was to be in heaven and that her children and her grandchildren and all those who love her would be in heaven with her. So family members, I know you are hurting, but we know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Yes, you are hurting now because death is a painful experience, but the best way to honor Mother Jalita is to accept the Jesus that she accepted and commit to seeing her in heaven when Jesus returns, where well, you will be with her never to part again. Today, you are sitting in the mourner's seat because of the sting of death. So cry if you must, but do not weep like those without hope because Mother Jalita left hope. And if you accept Christ as your Savior and Lord and live for him, you will see her again. So on behalf of our pastor, Pastor E. Danny Clark, the officers and members of this great Freeport Church family, we extend our heartfelt condolences to the bereaved family. And we know that God is able to keep you and to sustain you because he is your strength as you go through this extremely difficult period. I now invite the congregation with the exception of the Berea family, to stand as we blend our voices in singing the hymn, Some Glad Morning We Shall See, Jesus in the Air, Coming After You and Me, Joy is Ours to Share. Oh, what rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise, headed for the Jubilee.
Good morning, everyone. Let us pray. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning to give you thanks and to give you praise for the life of our dear sister, mother, and friend, Jolita and Bristol. Lord, we ask that you allow your Holy Spirit to join us this morning in giving this praise. We thank you, Lord, for her life. We thank you for her the blessings that you bestowed upon her, and we thank you for the relationship she shared with you and with this church. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless her family, especially her children, and make sure, our Heavenly Father, that they remember her teaching to them, remember her words of wisdom, remember her words of love, that they may continue. And when time get tough for them, Heavenly Father, Make sure that they rely on those words and share it with their children so that she will continue to be blessed. In these mighty sayings, we bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Coming now to... Give us the Old Testament reading is Sister June Ambrista, daughter-in-law of the deceased. Following her will be a music selection by Ina Cooper, friend of the family. Good morning, church. The lesson is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 14. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to pluck up what is planted and a time to plant, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time for everything. There was a time to be silent and a time to speak. Jesus had spoken until, no, I think, sorry. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit has the worker from that in which the laborers? I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one find out the work that God does from beginning to end. I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives, and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor, it is the gift of God. I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing from it, taken from it. God does it that man should fare before him. God's word is blessed.
Good morning. Sister Jalita, my confidant, my mother, my grandmother, with such a beautiful smile when she comes to that door and when she's leaving. She wanted a special song, but the sound system people, it cannot open, but the devil is a liar because she trusted in God. And we know, we who are alive and remain, along with Sister Jalita, will be caught up to meet Jesus in the air. So I'm gonna sing for her. Tis so sweet, and I'm sure all of you know that song. So, if you wanna sing with me, it's quite okay. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know thus saith the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I proved him o'er and o'er Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him more yes tis sweet to trust in Jesus Damn Just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I've learned to trust him, precious Jesus. Savior friend and I know that thou art with me wilt be with me till the end Jesus Jesus Jesus, oh, for grace to trust 
Mrs. Lockhart and myself, and secondly, on behalf of all members of Oasis Ministry here at the Freeport Church, I extend sincere condolences to the family of our beloved sister, Julita Umbrista. To her children, I truly know how you feel. The death of a mother is no or leaves no ordinary feeling within you. But you can take comfort in knowing that God in whom we trust is true and faithful and he has promised he will always be with us. I believe that Sister Bristol was indeed a virtuous woman. Certainly I know she was a virtuous mother. I visited her, I prayed with her, but my most memorable memory was greeting her when she came to church. And uh, all of our members, once they see her at the door, could attest to the fact of that infectious smile. When she, she also reminded me of my mother, especially when I put my arms around her to greet her because my mother was also, compared to me, short. And uh, that part gave me the most joy because whenever I went to Nassau and visited my mother and hugged her, I felt that feeling, that special feeling, particularly because she just reached right there. There were many other similarities between Sister Umbrista and my mother. My mother was also an Umbrista. They had the same complexion. They were both short in stature. They were all prayer warriors in their churches and they were all lovers of their family, especially their children. And again, I can say with assurance the kind of wisdom she shared with her children. And I, that's why I say I know how you feel today. But we all can take comfort in knowing that God will never, ever go back on his word to us. He has promised us that he will always be with us and that he will never, ever leave us alone. Coming to bring further tribute is McDonald Cooper, nephew, Edith Clark, and Keith Gibson, Godchild. presence of the Lord is truly in this place. Today is with, it is with heavy heart, but joy, comfort, and relief. It seems like only a couple weeks ago that we were here celebrating with Angelita while she celebrated her 85th birthday. Oh, how fitting it was. Today we're here for a different occasion. Nevertheless, it's for a special occasion. Angelita possess several characters, characteristics, sorry, 
6 that we would have heard in uh, Proverbs. My early experience with Angelita was back in the 60s. That's not to say how old I am, but that's when it started. <laughs> Angelita happens to be my mother, oldest brother, wife. And we lived in Grand Bahama, they lived in Abaco. So whenever we travel, it was my uncle, well, my uncles who came to get us. So when we go to Abaco, their house was our houses. Angelita was a person who was fearless. Like I said, she was a wife. She was also a mother. She was devoted to her family first, in every instance. But she also had a very generous heart where she always was able to share with others because she was blessed beyond measures. Some of her blessing is indicated by just looking at the people you see in here today. Her influence as a teacher would have caused her children to excel, to be influential people in this country. More than that, she was a mother and father because Uncle Herbert passed away many years. And since his passing, Angelita was the one who kept everything together for the family. She was an excellent woman in many ways because, like I can say, she loved the Lord. She was dedicated. She was no nonsense. And all of those who know her know that, you know, if you wanted good counseling, honest, you can speak with her. But don't expect her to be sugarcoating nothing because it didn't happen to her. Okay? So today, I would say to the family, which I'm a part, even though there's this separation, because I don't believe that persons who believe in God, there's never a loss. It's a separation. She has done her part, and it's up to us. So we have to take the mantle now, be dedicated, and if we are faithful to the end, we'll definitely spend time with her together. So today, I salute a I don't know if I can say a, a giant of a woman, but definitely a, a, a matriarch, but also a virtuous woman in every sense of the word, as the Bible would have said to us. We miss her, but she had served our purpose. Thank you for indulging with me. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's not easy being here today, but we're here today. I didn't write a speech. Mother was someone who, whatever she said, she said from the heart. Mother was part of my. <coughs> she input a lot in me. My mommy allowed mother to input her values in me. Mother watched the boy turn into a man. When the boy decided to make life-changing experience for himself, I look at mommy, mommy turn ahead, I run to mother. Mommy would have been biased. When mother talk, Trust me, if you have corn, you, you get mash. <laughs> so I say, Mother, you know me for a very long time. I had responsibility for my child. When Kirk come and say, oh boy, come, let's go. Never question Kirk. Mother, I get off the island, me and Steve, whatever you need, 
to go anywhere, get Nikki ready for school. We're talking about not from kindergarten. I taught to pick Nikki up, take mother wherever she wanted to go. She watched me evolve. So I jump in the car and say, um, go into the house. Say, mother, I need to sit down and talk to you, please. Mother, look at me. She a little worried at the time. I could see it in her face. So when I finally tell her what I can to talk to her and discuss with her, she said, on. And your mother always had that stare on her face. You don't come at mother sideways. <laughs> so I said, mother, I'm thinking of getting married. I said, I need you to tell me. Do you think I'm ready? After a long, lengthy conversation and prayer, mother said, yeah. I wouldn't get married and still stay married if it wasn't for her. Like I say, my mom would have been biased. You know, the jokey thing about it is, a couple days before the wedding, I get a phone call from Lita. Lita's only called me when she wants something fixed. <laughs> Nita called me, Robin. What makes you so better than all the mother children? Mother don't come in my salon. I say, uh huh. Mother come in here, get her hair do, her nails do, and then she come in here with clothes, more shoe. Say she want a toast do just for you. <laughs> I had nothing to say. Day of my wedding. Mother show up, Jesus Lord, mother was deck right out. <laughs> deck right out. The programmer was pleased with the input she put into her program. When it's time for the photographer to say, Mother the uh, groom, I need you to come take your picture, old mother was right there. Right there, you take one picture. Mommy, mother. My mommy respected mother. My mommy sometimes used to snitch on me to mother. I could have never hide nothing from mother because I didn't get snitched on a long time. She always made sure I was present to any family event. Sometimes I was always off the island because I like to travel. But there's always a phone call, hey, 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 Mickey. Mm. Then you see Jehan, Jehan got a call, hey, hey, mother, looking for you, where you is? I well, I off the island, because I always kept my phone on and don't care, I, I still answer it even though I off the island. She said, well, Kitty, yeah. But she always made sure I was present. She made sure I was a part of and even her kids, and look at you all right now. I the dark one. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I think, when you think about it, mother felt more comfortable around me, that's why she didn't love me so much. <laughs> you know, when you think she got all these little yellow children, now here comes this little dark one. Yep. Gone, but never be forgotten. Amen. My kids, my grandkids can always say about mother. We love you in this life and the next. And for me to see you, I got plenty of work. Yes. The work could be done. Mm -hmm. Mother was a virtuous woman. Amen. And anyone of her female descendants, they know mother don't play. Mother was always virtuous. You know, we could learn, even from being a man, we could learn from mother on her teaching and how she conducted herself. Love you, mother. Thank you for everything you've done for me.
Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I just want to say, we love you, mother, and sleep on in sweet heavenly peace.
What a tribute. I often heard people say, if you want to know who I am, come live with me. People who worshiped at church with Sister Ambrister knew about her. Persons in the community knew about her. But Jaslyn knew her. Jaslyn is the daughter of Sister Ambrister. And in recent years, Jaslyn would bring her to church every Sabbath. But Jaslyn, before you come to do as I knew her, we have Wendy and Bristol. Who's Wendy? <laughs> Wendy, we didn't forget you, darling. We didn't forget you. We have Wendy and Bristol, the stepdaughter. Wendy is coming to do a musical selection, and she will be followed by Jaslyn who will tell us how she knew her mother. I don't carry on like that one, but. I put them on the spot. See, I'm on the spot right now. Whenever I get on the spot, I put them on the spot. Um, this song was requested. Um, I'm more of a worshiper, but um, I just want to sing this song. Oh, we want to sing this song. They don't even know what they can sing right now. <laughs> but they trust me enough that if I say come, they, they, they follow me. And my brother even ain't know what he's going to play right now. <laughs> And we can die. 
with the Lord and that we ourselves will follow her. Yes. And we have to be changed. We have to ask the precious Lord to take our hands and lead us on. And if you don't know him as Lord and Savior, I mean, it's a whole bunch of us. Y'all can see all the red people. Yeah, that's us. <laughs> if you don't know him today, you now is the time. Now is the acceptable time. Don't wait until you walk out here. Today, mother's laying here. This is an example for us yes. to strive to meet Christ. Amen? Amen? To be like him, to live like him. And today, I just want all my sisters and brothers, wherever you're standing, I know we're supposed to be in the Mona seat today, but all of my sisters and brothers who are sitting that way, this way, wherever you are, because we are one Hallelujah. 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 Precious Lord, take my hand. Leave me Lord. Let me stay. I am tired. Sometimes I get weak. I Good afternoon, everybody. Proverbs 31 said, who can find a virtuous woman? My mother was that woman. But the part that I like about that is that it said her children would rise up and call her blessed. And we always celebrated mother. We loved mother so much. Every birthday or every opportunity we had to celebrate mother, we did. And so, we're not grieving without hope because we know where mother is today. She's in glory. And one day, oh, she's asleep, waiting to go to glory. Whatever it is, one day we will see mother again. And if you believe that, let me hear you say a while, amen. amen. Praise him. As I knew, as I knew her, Jalita, Russell, and Bristol. Jolita Ann Russell and Brister, my mother, my advisor, my friend. I know how to be a praying woman. She would usually begin by saying, Lord, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, to whom or where should I go? Then she would pray for her children carefully calling them by name. And there are many, many of us, 12 children. Sometimes for the rest, sorry, calling them by name, and sometimes for the rest of the world, 
Mother took her time in prayer, no rush, because spending time with her God was important to her. Next to her God was her handsome husband, my daddy. My daddy was the king of his castle, and he got the royal treatment. Presentation was everything, food on the table, napkins, and everything had to be said just right for daddy. For breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then you clean up after him. And for bath, you had to pour that water. And when he took his bath, you take it out. So no matter where daddy strayed, daddy always come back to the arms of his loving wife. Because nobody can do him like Jalita. <laughs> There was not much form of entertainment, I guess. It seems like every time they would play, a baby would be born. <laughs> Sometime, and one time it was two in one year. Raising 12 children plus your neighbor's children was not a small task, but mother did it effortlessly. We, her children, knew her, knew that mother didn't play when it came to our conduct. She didn't hold back when it came to discipline. Mother believed if you spare the rod, you spur the child. She taught us the word and live it the best, to the best of her ability. Mother was loving, kind, forgiving, and always grateful. She was so grateful to her, to her aunt, Blossy, her namesake. She was named after Jalita Hall. And she was so grateful to Aunt Blossy. When it was time for her to retire, she didn't, Aunt Blossy didn't say it was time for her to retire. Jalita and Brewster said it was time for her to retire. <laughs> and she bought her from Grand Bahama from taking care of the Jones family. And she bought her and she made sure she had a place to live, she had food to eat, and whatever she needed was provided. That's the kind of gratitude you give to the people who take care of you. Amen. If you, if you give mother a cup of water, she would always say thank you. It was everything was thank you. Mother had a peaceful, quiet spirit in her last day. She just rested, and she waited for her savior to call her. She, she didn't drive. Mother didn't drive because she chose not to drive, because she had too many children to drive for her. <laughs> so if she wanted a package delivered, she knows she can call any one of us, and we would do it. So that's how she got to helping the needy. She would pack up her package, and she would say, go carry this to this, this one. Go carry this to that one. And that's how she got her. That was her ministry. And her ministry became our ministry to help people. I believe that's how mother got her name. Because every time she saw a need, she fit it. And she used to like to do that good potato bread and pea soup and dumpling, and your mouth was watering. When mother say you cooking, she cooking that. Because you know how good that was gonna taste. And she would share that, or I gotta call this one to get some, and the next one to get some. Mother was a giving soul. She loved to feed people. She loved watching her gospel programs. TBN, 3ABN, and she gave to those ministries. She, was, she believed in establishing ministries. She helped and assist in building churches in Grand Bahama, First Baptist, Agape House, um, the cathedral. She assists. Wherever she went, she felt that she had the need to give something. So she gave back to her community.
Mother never wanted to be bedridden, and she asked the Lord never to let her go through that. So on September 20th, Mother came out of our room, went to her bathroom, freshened up after she said her prayers, and made her first stop at the living room. Greeting all her ch grandchildren who was there, good morning. Thank God for another day. Every time you ask Mother how, good morning, Mother, how are you? Thank God for another day. So she was grateful every time she see another day. Are you grateful for this day? So you have to be grateful for the day that the Lord has blessed you with. Every day, a new day, is a blessing. She made a first stop to the living room and as always greeted her grandchildren as usual. Good morning. Thank God for another day. Proceeded to her lazy boy chair, sat down, and she went to sleep. Who could believe mother was sleeping, like really sleeping, and she wasn't going to wake up? When they tried to wake her to give her breakfast, mother, couldn't, mother didn't say anything. And then they checked, and she wasn't breathing. And then we realized, they realized that mother was, we realized that mother was gone. But mother taught us a lot of things. Mother taught us how to live, how to love, how to forgive, how to cook, how to clean, how to sew, how to share, because she was our brother's keeper. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's what she always said. Love your neighbors as yourself. If somebody do you something wrong, let God deal with it. So she lived a long, happy life. And mother had a good life because her children surrounded her with love. Every day, she, had to, she was seeing one of, at least one or two or three or four. And sometimes when they be having a, a, a special occasion, all her children. So she showed us how to love by being that example. Be an example to your children. Be an example to those around you. So mother, you go to sleep. You sleep on. You take your rest. Because I'm going to meet you in the morning. I am going to meet. I can't speak for nobody else. But I am going to meet you some sweet day. So I love you mother and I will always love you. You would always be right here in my heart. But take your rest because I'll be with you in the morning. That's right. I have that on my notes too, you know. Teach us how to live, teach us how to love, and most of all, she teaches us how to die with no struggle, no stress. Just go sleep. Go sleep. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Ed, for reminding me. Praise the Lord for that. I, too, equally concur with the tributes past, but Sister Jalita and Brister, I too was connected in a personal way through her, listen to this, son and nephew, Michael, who was passed. She, he told me she was the only mother he knew. She took care of him until he died. Um, coming at this time, just before, so on behalf of my wife and I, um, my sincere and heartfelt condolences to the family. Coming at this time is to um, a musical, no, it's not a musical selection. <laughs> um, Leonard Curry, a musical selection by Leonard Curry 
who is a cousin. Following that, a New Testament reading will be given by Leanne Russell, who is a granddaughter. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. This is a homecoming, man. This is a homecoming. This is a homecoming. I only here because I could sing. I here because I'm a part of this family. You don't mind me black and ugly. I'm a part of this family. Yeah, you know, all the, all the old folks in Foxtown and Crown Haven. That had a shop. I I barely could go, and if I want to spend money with them, I had to send for what I want. Because if I go, they ain't taking my money. They tell me my money can't spend in their shop. And this lady was one of those ladies. You know, I stopped on my way from school just about every day, see what she cook, and she gonna feed me before I go home. Sometime I don't take no food when I get home. Mommy won't know what's going on. But sister, I'm busted on feed me. Yeah. So I'm here, I guess, to sing this song for the family. And believe me, this song is a song that identified this lady. And you can thank God for mama. Take a time. Right from wrong. She taught you your first song. <laughs> she taught you. Man, I know your mama taught you. The Lord who helped. See the devil. Never, 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 never change. All the God that do is gone. And you can thank God You can thank God For mama Tell the Lord Tell the Lord Thank God For mama She taught me How to pray Thank God For mama she showed me the right way. Yeah. I hope that I could see her yeah. in heaven yeah. some sweet day. Yeah. And I thank God, I thank God for mama. For you. Mama, 
mama told you. Oh yeah. Right from wrong. Check it out. Mama told you. Your first song. Mama told you. Got to share. I know you know. Yes, yes. Mama told you. <laughs> the Lord will rest. Oh. tell you. Oh, yeah. My God never changed. Yes, All you got yes. to do is I'll be reading the scripture lesson for the day before. I'll, let me say a little something. Today is what I would call a real bittersweet. It is bitter. Um, it's a combination of sad, but the bigger part, rejoicing and celebration, because I am just so happy for mother. You know, it's strange to use the word happy in a time like this, right? And I'm not supposed to get emotional because I was just strong. One and all of a sudden, I feel a little emotional because it just feels so final right now. But it's real celebration because, um, because my, like I told um, at, the, at the memorial, I said, my mother lived her whole life for this moment. And she taught her children and, prepare, and was preparing us all our life for when our time come. And now to see her dressed as the bride, prepared to meet her bridegroom, it's a big celebration. It's a real celebration. <laughs> Truly absent from the body, present with the Lord. And um, I said, I want to make this illustration, you know, because I look outside and I see so many Beautiful vehicles, you know, some of the latest models in every fashion in vehicles. But um, we all want to go to heaven. And I will have a news for everybody inside here who wants to go to heaven. There's only one Uber driver coming for you. 
only one Uber. If Christ don't come in the sky, you're going to be somewhere like this. Hopefully, you'll be as glamorous as mother, <laughs> but this is just the route. That is not sad for everybody, and it surely isn't sad for mother because we are rejoicing. I remember when daddy died, I used to say, mother, mother, you're going to get married again? You plan to get married again? Mother say, but child, the man who I can marry, he got to have this. And he got to have that. And he got to come with all of this. And he got to come with all of that. And all my children and my grandchildren got to be around me. And he cannot have a problem with that. For a woman having 12 children plus stepchildren, I say, mother, I think you better wait for King Jesus. Because <laughs> I don't think that will go work out. Well, mother, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And I, because you all celebrate with me and give mother a clap and just <laughs> rejoice with her. Let's rejoice with her. Because she looks gorgeous. I see she even lost a wrinkle or two. My mother, you know, she, she died 85, but she looked a little 25 to me. <laughs> I think, you know, God always has a way of you know, giving us a little hookup. So uh, our scripture lesson is taken from 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 and 18. When I saw this, I stumbled on this scripture, and I called Jasmine, and immediately I texted. I said, Jasmine, this is the one. This is the one. We must read this. She said, well, Nita, I think you're probably the best person to read it. Okay, let's read. It goes as follows. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Could I add to that? It's a difference between believers dying and unbelievers dying. He, believers, scriptures is telling you, don't sorrow. Because you're not on the same level as the unbelievers. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then, even so them also which sleep in Jesus Will, um, will God bring with him? They coming back. Mother coming with God. That's what the Bible say. They coming for Jesus. So mother could be in that cloud like, hey. <laughs> for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Woo! Yes. I could be there. <laughs> and the Lord shall descend with a shout. Give me a moment. Let me find where I was. <laughs> Okay, and I'll just continue reading. For the Lord himself will descend with, a sh with heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Oh, my God. All the Christians get first preference. The unbelievers, you all sit still because we got somewhere to go. Book, book, book. All right, now, that's what I'm saying. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's what I'm saying, right? Wherefore, wherefore, this, this is the part right here to everybody inside the room. 
everybody inside the house, even me who would have a tear every now and again, this the part right here, this is the sweet part, y'all listen. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. May these words be a blessing to your heart. And may you keep them in your mind. And if you're unbelieving, if you want to join that party up in the sky and be on the first calling, I advise you to get on board. Get on board. Amen and amen to that. Thank you so much. Uh, as I stand today, I want to offer sympathies and condolences to the family on behalf of the entire North Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. The membership scattered throughout the islands of Grand Bahama, Abaco, Bimini, and the Berry Islands. Our administrators of our headquarters here on the island of Grand Bahama, our school and our pastors and departmental directors, we offer our support and, and sympathies to the family. And in the words of the scripture reading that was just read, we trust that you are comforted by the word of the Lord today. That word will be brought to us by the president of this the North Bahamas Conference, Pastor Eric D. Clark. He's also the pastor of this church, the Freeport Seventh Adventist Church. He has prepared himself to deliver to this congregation, to the family members, God's word for this time. Just before the pastor of this church comes, we will have a special item of music by this combined Freeport Seventh Adventist praise team along with the Oasis members. Let's hear from this combined group and then afterwards our pastor, our president will come to bring to us God's word. Let's welcome both of them as they come.
thank God for the choir. I want to thank God for the music. I am redeemed and I wish also to thank Pastor Burroughs for his kind words of introduction. Today we pause to acknowledge the life of God's child, Sister Jalita and Russell Ambrista has laid down her weapons and God has closed her eyes in the sleep of death. Her witness will live after her and we will say to God be all the glory, great things he has done. I prepared a message for you today and uh, I'm not sure how we're going to do that <laughs> because some things have happened and I've made a couple of decisions today. I've decided that we need a second pulpit. <laughs> we need a, another stand, another pulpit. So when you come back the next time, you would know why we have the second pulpit. I want to take the opportunity to offer sympathies to the family today. On behalf of my own family, Patrice is in the praise team, on behalf of this church, on behalf of the North Bahamas Conference, as was mentioned. It was a wonderful privilege and pleasure to serve as pastor for Sister Jalita Ambrister. It really was. She was one of those unique persons. I have only been in her life for the last several years, but she was one of those peaceful souls. She was one of those who was steady as she goes, consistent and committed. And when the church doors were open, Jaslyn and others would bring her to church. And one of the things the church looked forward to was her birthday anniversaries. Whenever she would have her birthday, the entire family came to celebrate with her. And that was just special, Brother Keith. And uh, just to see the love and the compassion and all of that camaraderie that you all shared with your mom I am, I'm convinced that life is about making memories and good memories, good memories. Sister Jalita would have it no other way. There are some things that money cannot buy. Money can't buy. As we come together today and pay our final respects as it were, and share a word from the Bible, I ask you to bow with me. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for just this opportunity to share, to explain, to delve, to get something from you. We ask that you would bless this study today. And Lord, hold us and teach us and comfort us for this time in which we live. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I believe that we start to die from the day we're born. Would you agree with that? All right. From the time a person is born, they begin to die. I've heard of even funeral directors crying at funerals now. What that tells me is that you never get accustomed and used to death and dying. Anybody here accustomed to it? No matter how much you've seen, no matter how much you've gone to, you never get accustomed to death and dying. So much so that I really believe that Jesus does not want us to become accustomed to it. Jesus' purpose was to come to give us what everybody? Life and have it what? more abundantly that's what the word of God says so if you don't mind today I want to just stand on the word because if I deal with emotions I may mislead you 
And God will charge me for misleading you, all of you like that. So one, the Bible says Jesus came to give us life and to have it more abundantly. And then he gave us his word. He says, take courage, take comfort, take assurance in the word. Here's what the word of God says. The Bible says it succinctly this way. It says that it will teach us, it will guide us. It's been given to lead us into all truth. No wonder Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the... No man cometh unto the Father, unto me, but through the Father right and in saying that God wants us to come to grips with the fact that only Jesus is the way so when I read my Bible I see things and then when I hear things around I have to compare it with the Word of God I love how awesome and incredible God is because he says let not your hearts be what you believe in God, believe also in? In my Father's house are what, everybody? If it were not so, I am going, Jesus says, I am going to do what? Prepare a place for you so that where I am, follow with me now. Jesus says he is going to prepare a place. And he's going to come back again. And when he comes back again, why is he coming back? That's right. He says so that he can take us to be where he is. Am I still on point in the word of God? We read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 just now, verse 16, 17, and 18. And when you compare line upon line and scripture upon scripture and here a little and there a little, you'll discover that the word has this wonderful way of explaining itself. So here's what verse number 18 says. Verse 18 says, wherefore comfort one another with these words. When you backtrack now, what words are they come talking about? It says the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of archangel and the trump of God. And then it says the dead in Christ. The dead in Christ shall do what? Shall do what? One more time, the dead in Christ shall do what? That's the word. It's not my word. When the Bible says the dead in Christ shall arise for us, it's deliberate, it's distinctive, because it realizes that if I work on your emotions, I can tell you stuff, and you may lose your soul before you could blink twice. Sister Jalita and Bristol recognize that if you don't stay in the word, you're going to lose out. The dead in Christ... She'll rise first. And one of the things that the enemy is going to use to, 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 to blind us is what is called spiritualism. Spiritualism is that which in essence says that the soul continues to live. Have you ever heard about a never dying soul? But can I tell you what the word says? It says the soul that sinneth Did I make it up? The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Here's the truth about it. God wants all of us to have a place with him in glory. And he has done everything in his power to ensure that that happens. So Jesus says, I'm going to go, I'm going to prepare a place so that where you are or where I am, there you will be also. I want you to be with me. And when he says he wants us to be with him, he says, even if you die, he says, and if you die in the Lord, he says, I'm coming back for you. And I'm going to make sure that you're a part of the first resurrection. Did you know there are going to be two resurrections? That's what my sister said earlier. I remember a story in the Bible called in the book of John chapter 11. It's a story about a man who Jesus raised from the dead. What's his name? There you go. After Lazarus was dead, 
Where did God bring him down from? Trick question. Who is as righteous as Lazarus? What I'm trying to say is the power, the power of, of, of the word. Right? So when Lazarus was dead, the Bible says they put him in that sepulcher. That grave, that cemetery. And Jesus came. How many days late? Four days late. Four days late. And there was a reason for it. The reason was that they felt that, that if he came three days late, then there was that belief there in superstition that it meant that Lazarus was not quite yet dead. So God waited four days beyond the superstitious thinking of the day. So that at that time, Mary and Martha says, Man, our brother stinketh. And the reason was so that those of us who are sitting in the church today at the funeral service of Sister Jolita Mother would know that Jesus is able to save even to the uttermost, and it doesn't matter how long you have been dead. steps into the picture and he doesn't call Lazarus from heaven he says Lazarus come forth is that the word yes. Lazarus come forth so I know we could get emotional I know we could say a lot of things I know all of our lives we've been taught things but can you do me one favor and just make sure that whatever you read, you hear, you see, it lines up with God's holy word. So I ask you for five more minutes, and that is the passage of Scripture found in the book of Job. Here's what the Bible says in Job chapter 19 and verse number 25. Job had an experience, and Job says this. He says, for I know that my Redeemer liveth. I stop right there. For I know that my Redeemer liveth. Verse number 25. That's Job chapter 19. Beloved brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that the life that this godly woman whose remains is before us this morning is one where she knew that her Redeemer liveth. I put it to the people of God today that there are some things that you have to know. Oh man, first of all, he says, my Redeemer liveth. He didn't say my Savior. He said, now my Redeemer. What does Redeemer mean? It's somebody who recognizes that all have sinned and come short. It is somebody who realized that they need to be reborn. Because they were made in sin and shapen in iniquity. When you think of your Redeemer, you are thinking of somebody who gave his ultimate sacrifice so that you and I can have life and have it more abundantly. Job says, I know that my Redeemer lives in. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. What do you know today? <laughs> know that my Redeemer lives it. You gotta know it. Gotta know it. And secondly, can I suggest to you that you've got to have a personal relationship with him? Ah, oh, I know that my Redeemer, is he your Redeemer? I know that my Redeemer liveth. There are some things you've got to know and you've got to have a personal connection with it. So if you could get this for me today, I believe we would have settled the account with Sister Jolita and Brister and we can go home making that commitment and that decision. I'm not going to let nobody take my crown. <laughs> Jesus died for me. You have to know that he died for you. You have to embrace him as your redeemer. I embrace him as my redeemer. I know that my redeemer liveth. <laughs> Bible says, you know, he says, when, when you die, you don't know anything. <laughs> says the living know that they're going to die. But the dead don't know 
anything. That's Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse number 5. When you're alive, you know some things. But when you're dead, you don't know anything. So what should we do then? We ought to live right. We have to give Christ our all. Because after this, there's a resurrection. Isn't that what your Bible says? It's been appointed unto man once to die. And after that, what? There's going to be a judgment, man. If all we did was live and died and that's it, then we could all go and do anything we want to do. But there is a judgment that's coming afterwards. So when I hear about Sister Jolita passing, I'm so happy that her lifestyle and her life living speaks to me on how I need to prepare my own life to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. That doesn't mean that she never sinned. Because all have sinned. And last I checked, that even includes the Pope. That includes the king. That includes the pauper. All is all. I have sinned. And Jesus says, I know that. Look at how incredible, how awesome he is now. A God who made us. Man, let me tell you something. Can I confess to you today? If I was God, I don't know what I would do, how I would have treated you. I don't know if I would send my only son, Jesus. I've only got one son. But to die for those who are going to pull a crown of thorns on his head, spare, spare, spare him in the side, and kill him? Knowing what was in our hearts, God knew. But he loved us with an everlasting love. And he sent Jesus just to die for us. When I, when I, when I come to grips with that, I realize that I've got to be careful how I treat my neighbors. I've got to be careful how I talk to those who are around me. I've got to demonstrate Christianity at its highest level because Jesus went all the way to Calvary just for me. Just for you too? Yes, he did. All right? And he could have chosen angels. He could have just spoken the word. But he chose those of us who have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And because we have been redeemed, angels don't know the joy that our salvation brings. They will have to fold their arms. Even though our guiding angels have been with us all through our lives, they cannot relate. Because they have not experienced it personally. Jesus, suspended on a cross, just for me and you. And then we got the heart to live any kind of way we want to live. That can't be right. It is not right. And so the conclusion of the whole matter is, he says, let not your hearts be troubled. Don't fret so much about everything that's going on. Just make sure that you put your hand in the hand of the man who stills the waters. Who knows what the future holds. The one who was suspended between heaven and earth, like I said. Just so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. That's the God that we serve. That's the power of life everlasting. That's the God who says, don't get so emotional. Emotions is good, but make sure that your emotions line up with the word of God. When we do that, we realize that the devil could only come so far and no further. That God who ordained this world 
and who knows everything before it happens knows what you're going through. And what I love about God is that we don't have to try to carry God anywhere. God is already there. That's God, man. That's the city leader's God. Can you imagine if you had a God and you had to take them, lift them, you made them, you bought them, you do as if though that's your God and you had to carry them where you want to go and just in case you forgot to leave your God home, you have to turn back and go home to get your God? The God that we serve, he is omnipotent. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. He is omnibenevolent. He is sovereign. And whatever he does is well done with us. Hallelujah! Sister Jolita made a commitment. And her commitment was just to live a simple life following the word of God. She read it, and she says, the grass will wither, the flower will fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. She read it, and she discovered that time is longer than rope. So you could fight as much as you want to fight. Truth is not impressed by how much I fight it. And it doesn't change based on who says it. It is based on what the word of God says. I must confess I didn't come to bring this to you today. <laughs> but we thank God for his grace and his goodness and his mercy. Amen. Would you give God praise in the house today? Give God praise in the house today. I pray with you. Father in heaven in the name of Jesus. You have been merciful to us. We sit here all dapper, looking mighty nice, but truth be told, our hearts yearn for you. And without you, where would we be? And so, Father, if we have offended, I pray that you will forgive. But we could not allow the church to leave today without sharing a little bit of what thus saith the Lord. Have thine own way, O God. Thank you for the life of our matriarch, mother, Sister Jalita Ambrister. Thank you, O God, that you have given her the assurance of sins forgiven and she lived that way and she demonstrated that to her family and now I pray that we will take a page out of her book and operate in such a way that when time does give way to immortality when Jesus Christ burst the clouds of glory Oh God, I pray that we will all be in that number that will be able to look up and say, Lord, this is our God. We have long waited for him and he will serve us, save us. Thank you, Lord, for this day, for this moment, for this decision. Oh God, seal it. In Jesus' name we pray and all the people said, Amen and amen. We'll have our remarks and then a special prayer will be done for the family in Jesus' name. We now invite Pastor Ed um, Brister, stepson, to come and offer a special prayer for the family. Yes, you can do that. Mm -hmm.
you. Hallelujah. I'm here to pray for the family. I know it's a big family. But I want to add even the church family into this prayer. Even um, Jubilee West have a group of persons from the church that I pastor in Eat My Rock. And you know, because I am a son, then they look at themselves as sons and daughters too. And so I want all of the family to just lock hands. I'm not going to ask you to stand up. Because mother, in that song they saw, they, they, she taught us how to pray. And mother is a woman, was a woman of prayer. And so I come today. Hallelujah. Just being reminded of the time I heard her praying for the family. And I can hear some of those words. Asking God, crying out to God on our behalf. Father in heaven, we come to you today giving you thanks, praise, honor, and glory in the name of your Son Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior. Of ourselves, Father, we will fail. Constantly, we will prove only to be a failure. But we can do all things through Jesus Christ. He's given us the strength. I come now praying for the family. Every son and every daughter that mother has birthed. Thank you, Father, for your blessings upon their lives and their spouses, Father. Thank you for your covering on their lives. Everyone that is connected to mother through the bloodline, through marriage, through adoption, thank you for your covering now. Upon the children, the grandchildren, all of the offspring of our body, the great-grandchildren, I pray a covering over their lives now. And I repeat the prayer that I one time heard mother pray. Thank you, God, for keeping my children safe from danger, from harm, from sickness, from accidents, from death and destruction. Thank you, Lord, for keeping them safe today. I give you the praise, honor, and glory, Lord, that even as mother always pray that there will be unity in the family. We will be one. We will be united. And even as Kirk is the oldest son, Lord, help him to set example for all the brothers. Alida is the oldest daughter. Help her to set the example now for all of the daughters. I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for the Ambrister family now, Lord. Oh, God, let your anointing rest upon us as never yet before. That we will do the thing that is upright, pleasing, and acceptable in your sight. And we know that's mother's heart. That was our prayer. Oh God, keep my family together. There will be no division, no separation. But we will work together in unity and in love. One for another. Even as Christ has loved us. Bless us all together now. Keep us safe, Lord God. Let your direction be the path that we follow. And we will continue to give you all the glory, all the honor, all the thanks, and all the praise. For I, I ask this today, Father, in no other name, but the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who is my Lord and my Savior. Amen.
the church say. This service will now transition to the Grand Bahama Memorial Park and we will exit the church in this order. The platform participants will lead, followed by the casket, Paul Bearers, the immediate family. We're asking everybody to kindly stay in your seats until they reach your row so we can exit the church in order. There will be a happy meeting in heaven, I know, when we see the many loved ones we've known here below, gathered on that blessed hilltop with hearts all aglow. That will be a glad reunion day. Let's stay faithful until that day. And we know that we will see Sister Jalita on that day. Shall we all stand, please?
Jesus, oh Jesus, how I trust him. 